So the project is about uh, using electrokinetics uh, to using electrokinetics to better understand rocks by uh, by working with the kind of the the connection there is between elect, uh, electrical current flow and water flow in the rocks, and that's what electrokinetics is. So we're looking at putting, applying electrical field to the rock, either a direct current or alternating current, and that will cause water motion in the rocks, and then you know, we can measure a pressure, and then also applying a pressure, um, like a sinusoidal pressure, and then measuring the induced electric field in the rocks. It is repeating over and over again, so it's a very tiny signal, but it's repeating through time. So we actually can't, we don't have to push the water through the rock, which it's a very tight rock that might be difficult or impossible, or it might take many days or weeks to, if you start to push, to wait for the fluid to come out the other end because some rocks are very tight. But if we just kind of swish it back and forth, it's what we're doing. And so by doing that, we're able to kind of indirectly measure some of the properties of the rocks because we're, uh, we're inducing this secondary effect that we can measure. And it really, it, it works out that it's, a, it's kind of a neat and tidy thing that you, you can apply the electric field, measure the pressure response, you can apply the pressure, measure the electric field response, and you basically take the ratio of the two results and you just get the permeability, which is usually the number that everybody's interested in. It's a secondary effect you don't worry about in normal rocks or in permeable rocks, but in tight rocks, which are really the focus of nuclear waste disposal, oil recovery, secondary oil recovery, they're important for CO2 sequestration, all those kind of applications. In those applications, the idea of understanding tight rocks is important. We started looking at a real like CT scan of a rock. So very tiny, you can actually see the individual grains. And we started working with that, but it turns out it was so complicated, we stopped and we took a step back and we started working with just like arrays of spheres and ellipses and squares because we thought well let's let's step take a step back and understand the, the fundamentals of the problem before we dive into like a real world application and it's a great great thing we did because we we basically we look at squares and ellipses and we rotated them different amounts and basically virtually flowed water through them and looked at the electrical response and applied current and looked at the flow response. And we did this for varying levels of tortuosities. The, the academic alliance part of it has been brought in because the, the team is very good at pore scale modeling. They're very good at modeling, you know, the actual fluid behavior between two grains of sand. They can simulate like the full physics of what's going on there. And they have a lot of experience doing that. In fact, this team, they've, they've published lots on it, but they haven't really ever done any applications with rocks. I think it was a great uh, opportunity for you know, Sandia and University of Illinois to come together and work on this. And we've already got one paper submitted and we're finishing up a second paper and we're looking to continue going forward and you know seek out additional funding and uh, continue our collaboration I think we've taken a we've taken a step in the right direction